Hello everybody, welcome to another video on the channel. Today we have the lovely Nico with me. Hello. We're gonna be doing a photo shoot today and we're gonna be contrasting or trying to show the difference between two lighting modifiers. So here we have a giant cone, which is awesome. And then behind us we have a giant parabolic umbrella. So we're gonna look at the difference in lighting or look at the difference in like what the lighting does to the model space and how the shadows fall, contrasting these two studio modifiers. All right. Okay, so before we get started on the photo shoot, let's talk about these light modifiers and how they change the light and create different looks. So behind me, we have a giant 86 inch parabolic umbrella. This is an 11 inch throw reflector. 11 inches refers to the distance across. 11 inches, that's 86 inches because that's a distance across on that umbrella. So these two light modifiers are from Alien Bees and um, PulseyBuff.com. And uh, these mounts obviously are proprietary to Alien Bees, but I guess with the umbrella, it has a rod. So if you're using Godox or another brand or whatever, it has that little hole for the umbrella rod. You can buy that parabolic umbrella for that. And unfortunately, this light is only for policy buff, but you can buy these lights in different mounts or these modifiers in different mounts. I keep calling them lights, but they're modifiers, light modifiers. So what's the difference between these two? This is an 11 inch throw reflector. And what that means is it kind of throws the light in a direction. It's a bit of a spotlight. It's not as much of a spotlight as let's say a snoot. If you use a snoot, if you don't know what that is, this is a snoot. It sort of focuses the light into a narrow beam. It's got a grid inside and a little narrow opening and you can create a spotlight effect with the snoot. Whereas this will create a little bit more of a spread not as much of a spread as this. This is a, your basic like 45 degree uh, nine inch reflector that you get with most lights It's part of the kit. But what this will do is it'll just, if you have 10, let's say you have your light here and it's set to 10 units of power. This is silver and reflective. So obviously the light will bounce around in there and it's got this lip. So it's kind of focuses the light right on the model. And the advantage to this light is you can create a shadow outline around your model. So if you want to nice sharp shadow, you can move this further back. And of course, the further back the light goes, the more pronounced the shadow. And if you bring it closer, obviously it's, it's more intense. The light's more intense, so you're gonna have to drop it, but the shadow spreads a little bit more. So you can kind of dictate how you want the shadow by moving the light closer and further. And of course you can move the light around the model, circle it around the model to move the shadow around into different places. And you can use that shadow to create mood, to create emphasis, to create shape, to create pattern, to create sharp lines, soft lines, that kind of thing. So it allows you to add character to your shot depending on what you're trying to create. Whereas the 86 inch parabolic umbrella is like a window light. So this is um, a soft silver umbrella. There's also like a, a, a shiny reflective silver which give a, a sharper light. This will give a slightly softer light because it's the soft silver and it spreads the light everywhere. So if you have this with 10 units of power, it's gonna focus the light right on the model. It's gonna be really bright. But with that modifier, if you have your light set to 10 units of power, obviously that light is spread out over a greater area. So it's not gonna be as bright. So you might have to bump up your ISO or increase the power of your light, depending on what you're shooting or what you're trying to create. So that's just something to keep in mind. But these two light modifiers, I figured would be a good way to start my, uh, my series on light modifiers and studio lights because they're completely on opposite ends of the spectrum. All right, with that being said, let's jump into the photo shoot, take some shots and analyze the photos and look at how the lighting is different with the two modifiers. And for the shoot today, we're gonna be shooting with the EOS R. I know I have the R5, which is a newer camera, but I'm working on a review on the EOS R. I still think it's a fantastic camera in 2023. So we're gonna be shooting it with it and uh, we're gonna be using the 28 to 70. And this is a terrible studio lens. It's uh, its major feature is being able to shoot at F2 and it's super sharp, so it's better for natural light. For studio shoots, I do prefer the 24 to 105, but again, doing a review on this lens and this camera coming up. So if you wanna see those, definitely subscribe to the channel. All right, so now we have the umbrella set up here. We have the model over here, and we're gonna take some shots and take a look at the shadows. Yeah, three, yeah. Attitude, love it, love it. All right, so we've taken a couple of shots with the model standing away from the wall. Now we're gonna get her right against the wall so we can see how the shadows fall behind her because there's, <laughs> I've got this little, little oh, head poking out here. So what we wanna see is like, how the shadows fall when the model's away from the wall and how the light wraps around her. And then when she's against the wall, we're gonna see how those shadows fall because those shadows can add character to the shot. Okay, so let's take a look at some shots of Miko here with the umbrella. And as you can see, the umbrella creates a nice, soft, very pleasing light on the body. The skin looks very natural, very nice. 
it's kind of beautiful. I really want to take this umbrella outside and try and shoot in daylight with it just to see what it looks like. I'm very curious. But you can see here that the um, the shadows on the chin, you see how it just falls under the chin here? It's not too, too dark, not too bright. You can lighten it up if you want, but it looks very natural, very pleasing. Shadows under the eyes, the nose. You can even see like on the skin here, the skin that's more forward or closest to the light is a little lighter and then towards the edges it falls off. And as you saw in the behind the scenes video, we're not using any kind of flags or anything for that. So you create nice pleasing shadows with a lot of depth and it looks very beautiful. I'm really happy with these shots. And here, this is interesting. Miko is leaning back against the wall and you'd think there'd be more shadows because she's creating more shadows on the wall. But because of the, the nature of the large umbrella and the light wrapping around her, the, the shadows under the armpits have been reduced. But they're still there, but it's for the most part, it's still very light, very high key, very bright. This is a good like commercial type lighting. If you wanna do fashion or black and white, it's a very nice, clean, even lighting for that kind of thing. I would say for commercial, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. It looks really good. And um, I think one of the strongest things about this or one of the be most beneficial things about this light is just the way the shadows fall. It just looks very natural. For a, for a studio that only has one window and obviously we're overpowering that window light right now with this flash. It just looks very natural and clean and pleasing. So if this is the effect you're looking for to create in your photography, then uh, definitely consider a giant, <laughs> giant umbrella. And I don't know if you want me in the shot or in the shot. Of course you can be in the shot if you want oh, to. I'll the, the star of the show here. So we are done with the parabolic umbrella and now we are going to use this, uh, this big reflector and we're gonna See what the lighting looks like with this. So this light is pretty interesting because it shoots a really hyper-focused light right onto the model and then it creates a lot of edgy shadows and there's no other lights. This is, both of these setups are just one light setups. And the really cool thing is with this light is you can kind of angle it to the left of the model or the right of the model and what happens is you create a longer shadow on one side or the other. So depending on which direction the model is looking and what kind of feel or mood or story you're trying to tell, you can exaggerate the shadow on one side or the other. So my hope with these shots is to create really high contrast black and white shots with a strong edgy shadow slightly to one side of the model, but not too far that the shadow becomes uh, a visual distraction. It's the same. All right, so now I took the first shot and as you can see, it's way overexposed because this reflector focuses all that energy of the light into one spot, whereas the umbrella kind of spread that energy out over a lot of, a lot of distance or a lot of space. So the light kind of lost its intensity. So now we got to lower the power here. So we went from one half power down to one eighth power. Now the other thing we got to keep in mind when using this kind of light, it's shooting from a really high angle. So we got to watch out for the uh, the beard shadow. <laughs> we don't want to create a giant shadow under the model, but that's something you would probably concern yourself with in a big studio. Since this is such a small studio, the light bounces off the wall, back off this wall, back to the model, it fills in a lot of light. So just keep in mind if you're using these kinds of lights in a bigger studio, the light fall off is a little bit different. So we're kind of shooting in a giant white box. Yep, 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 love it, love it, love it, love it. Bring this hand up a little bit higher. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, can we do like hands in the pockets? Kind of like a little bit like innocent. So we're gonna contrast the innocent with the like. Okay. Okay. If you can pull that look off, I don't know. Oh, I can see your hands. Yeah? All right. All right, so what do you say? Did uh, Miko here pull off the innocent look? <laughs> She's all fire and attitude, which is what I love about her face. But uh, yeah, definitely not innocent here. I think she's trying to be innocent, but those eyes are still conveying this wildness, which is awesome. That's the look I love about her. But um, yeah, <laughs> definitely no, that's definitely not innocent either. But let's look at the shadows. This is what we're doing here. Uh, we have the reflector. It's about one foot higher than Miko's head, which creates the, uh, the shadow under the chin. We don't want to create too much of a shadow because if this shadow drops down, let's say three, four inches down here, it looks like my beard and you definitely don't want a beard shadow on a model. Well, maybe you do, I don't know. Things are all over the place these days, but uh, in general, you don't want that. 
but you can see the nice shadow behind her here. So depending on how you set up the shoot and what the mood is you're trying to create, you can use that shadow to your advantage. Here we've got like a side view, so we just see a little shadow here from her head. And this would be more of a distracting shadow here because it's like, what is that? You know, if you squint your eyes, it kind of just looks like long hair, but it's not hair. So that's a visual distraction. And this is pretty cool. We got this nice shadow here that sort of follows this arm. Very little shadow on the rest of the body because the arms are up. And we got this nice shadow here contouring her face and her arms. So this is really cool. I really like the way this one came out. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's with the light straight on. Now we're gonna move the light around a little bit. Okay, super happy with how these shots are looking. In my opinion, it's very fashion lighting. So. If you're interested in getting a large throw reflector, these are the kinds of shots you can get. Now we're gonna get the model up against the wall and we're gonna work with the shadows behind the model. Now we've positioned the light up and to the left of the model, which means the shadows are falling down into the right. And you can see here, it's kind of interesting the way these shadows are forming. Here we have a shadow that runs along the arm, which kind of accentuates the arm and makes the arm pop. And then this is really cool here, how we have the shadow around the face so you can see Miko's nose and lips and hair and I feel like this shadow really accentuates the mood and the feel of the shot and just brings something extra to the shot that otherwise wouldn't have been there so that's an example of a good shadow and here I think this is a bit of a, a bad shadow I do like this shadow here along the arm I think that really makes the arm pop but this shadow here behind the head just looks like this dark <laughs> dark mass behind her head and it's just visually distracting you want the face to be the subject matter not this and I find that the eyes keep drifting over to here so that's a distracting shadow all right if you notice here in the corners it's a little bit dark it looks like a vignette but it's not a traditional vignette caused by lens this vignette is caused by the spotlight of the reflector so the reflector is projecting the spotlight on the wall and it's big enough to cover Miko but it's not big enough to go edge to edge so the edges get a little bit darker and there's ways around that you can actually move the light further away to have a bigger projection on the wall or you can add other lights to fill that in if you don't want that so there's workarounds for that but yeah in this shot I find this elbow shadow very distracting I do like the face I like the, the shadows on the face and the nose and I like the fact that the shadow from this arm falls across the body but doesn't interfere with the face but overall this is just <laughs> that's distracting right there Here's another shot with the arm tucked in and this works a lot better. So we have this nice shadow here, lots of attitude with the eyes, the expression, and this, this kind of adds to the shot as opposed to taking away from it. And here's another really cool thing you can do. We use the hair to kind of block the light from the face and now we have this mystique and this mysteriousness and this edginess and it's just like, who's this woman? What, what's going on? Why is she in the dark? It just adds a little flavor to the shot. So it tells a little bit of a story and maybe you could put something in her hand or have something in the background that accentuates that story. But uh, yeah, this is another way you can use shadows to kind of add a little interest into your shots. All right, and that's my first lighting video on the channel. First of many more to come, but for those of you who stuck around this far, I've got a little bonus tip for you. I usually put a circular polarizer filter on the front of my lens when I shoot in studio. It's just, I don't know if it makes that much of a difference, but to me anyway, it just kind of keeps the darks darker and keeps the highlights from blowing out. I also have highlight tone priority turned on on my camera. So it just kind of adds a certain contrastiness and a certain look that I like. And it's just a very subtle thing, but if you want to give it a try, try a circular polarizer filter on your camera when you're shooting with studio strobes. Or if you want, you can also try an ND filter. A very, very light ND filter will keep the darks dark and not leave the highlights high. And it'll just give you a little more contrasty, punchy kind of shot. So <laughs> there you go. A little bonus tip at the end of the video for those of you who stuck around to the end. So thank you very much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Leave a comment down below. I've been lighting things for 19 years, so I have a lot of knowledge on the subject. So. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. And with that being said, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. A lot more lighting stuff coming up. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.